Good morning. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. It is June 6th in growing zone 6B and it is too hot to freaking think outside. So I'm going to be hanging out indoors today. I've got some stuff to prepare and then once it gets a little cooler, we'll go out to the garden and take care of that. Thing one on my list today is to make some cabbage looper decoys. Um, I don't know if y'all have had to deal with loopers or cabbage moths as they're called sometimes, but man, they are a menace out in the brassica patch. Um, they've just gobbled a whole bunch of my stuff. I don't know if we're gonna get much out of this spring planting. I may be sowing them again in September. So the idea behind these decoys is that the loopers that are out there are gonna see these and they're gonna be like, oh my God, it's a monster looper. We're not gonna get involved in this area. And so they don't do a monch. And then because there's this intimidating presence in the garden, they don't wanna get involved. So we're gonna chase them away with uh, our little plastic decoys. Um, but we'll see what we can do. I'm gonna give these a shot. I got some printouts off of somebody's website. I'll stick the link down in the description. I'm gonna cut out the, uh, the moth images. I'm going to attach them with some packing tape onto some plastic from milk bottles. And then we're gonna stick them on wires and pop them into the ground. I mean, fuss about and find out, I'm in. Let's do some science. getting on towards evening. We've still got like three hours before sunset, whatever, but the garden is starting to cool off from, it was 90 degrees today and I am just not built for that heat. So I've been hiding indoors. So the temperature has gone down, which means we're gonna be good to go into the garden and I wanna handle that blight issue I've got. So I'm gonna mix up a peroxide solution and my handy dandy sprayer bottle that I got at the farm store for like five bucks and was thrilled. It's a, a pump action thing and you, it's a good bottle. Anyway, I'm gonna mix it up into here. The original recipe for this solution that I was told about was a gallon of water and eight teaspoons of hydrogen peroxide. So I have scaled it down to fit in my bottle. We are dividing it by four. This is a quart of cold water. That is 32 fluid ounces. And now I'm going to add two teaspoons of hydrogen peroxide to it. Um, so it's gonna be in the same ratio. This solution I'm going to spray onto my tomato plants when I'm out there in a little bit. And it's supposed to take care of the fungal business that's causing this blight and our tomatoes should be okay. So I'll meet you out there. I'm not normally one to talk about the weather, but this nonsense over the last three weeks has been just so intense. Um, we had it cold and then we had it cold and rainy and then it got warm and now it's 90 degrees. Um, so a bunch of things happened because of wacky weather. One of those things is my tomatoes seem to have a fungal infection. It looks like blight. I started noticing this the day after a really heavy rain and at first I thought, oh, the mulch just splashed up onto the leaves. Uh, but on closer inspection, that's not what we're looking at. This is what's going on here. You can see all the little, little spots. It's on the front. Um, and you can see them on the back too. And it does, it does look a little bit like just dirt got up in there, but 
I assure you that is some fungal nonsense. And now what I'm gonna do tonight is I'm gonna go through and spray with our antifungal solution and see if we can get these folks to recover. Um, most of them look all right. I mean, there were some that were definitely not affected and that shows you the strength of cultivars. Different varieties are going to have different levels of resistance and vigorousness. So it doesn't surprise me even a little bit that only a bunch of the tomatoes were affected and there were some that are like, yo, whatever, I'm good. Um, but yeah, it, it's been, it's been great weather for mushrooms. <laughs> I also had to cut down a bunch of the raspberry canes because they developed rust. So we're gonna get a smaller harvest this year. The June bearing canes look like they're pretty good and I bought some bird netting. We should have a bunch of berries on that. Um, but the September bearing, oh, I don't know. I had to cut down a lot of those. And again, it was a variety thing. The June bearing canes weren't affected even a little bit, not a touch of rust on them. Um, but the September bearing canes, the late bearing canes, every one of them had rust on them. I was a little bit heartbroken, um, but we've got that stuff on the burn pile now. It. I'm gonna spray all these tomatoes down. Uh, the bottom leaves are, they're going. Oh, hi, Joker. All right, so I've pumped up the pressure in here and we're gonna spray these tomatoes all over with a fine mist. I'm just gonna snap off the stuff that's touching the ground. Let me show you what's going on with these brassicas. It, it's a sad state, poor things. All right, so they are pretty torn up over here. Cabbage loopers have been just chowing down. Although the mustard looks remarkably better. Fewer, fewer foes are interested in eating the mustard greens. Um, but yeah, these, these Napa cabbage, they sure got the business. And so I'm gonna put these decoys down and we'll see if we can see any improvement over the next little bit. All right, so the, the other big thing that's going on in the garden right now is the onions. The onions, my friend, we've got scapes. And you know what that means. That means the bulbs are not gonna get any bigger. Okay, so we've got some onions in the back and shallots up here in the front. And these we planted in, I wanna say November, like mid-November, around Thanksgiving time. Um, the onions we planted from tiny bulbs. Um, and those are going to be second year onions, so we weren't expecting that they wouldn't flower, but we weren't expecting that until later in the season. Um, the shallots, I, I guess they were second year shallots if they're putting off seeds. Um, that's what the scape is. It, this is gonna become a flower and it, she, she wants to be pollinated and make seeds. That's all that's going on there. And if we're making seeds, then we're not bulbing um so it's it's time to pick them we're gonna pull them out and cook with them hopefully this week we can bring you some garden to table stuff how cool would that be so i'm gonna get on that and uh yeah here we go aren't these just beautiful though look at this it's just so pretty and i think that they I want to say these are going to bloom into something kind of a puffballish business. All right, so let's see what we got here. All right, so both of these have scapes. I'm going to give them a wiggle. Oh, 
the marker from last year. Let's give this a wiggle. This is some nice soft dirt. Oh, she an onion, and she's little, but we can still eat that. We'll eat that sometime this week. Now these feel like they might be shallots. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that, not bad. It's not the worst shallot in the world. Look at that. All right, so all in all, not too bad. I would say there were about five or six onions. Okay, so I got one, two, three, four shallots out of that and one, two, three, four, five, six onions out of that. And you, they're, they're little, they're little. We're gonna cook with these like right away. They're going, they're going into dinner. Um, and the shallots we'll probably use within the next few days too. I'm gonna take them in and clean them off. I'm not even gonna try to cure these. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put them up and give half to my neighbor and hang on to half. And I think we're both gonna be having some onion themed dinners <laughs> this next couple of weeks. Look at these beautiful scapes. I cannot wait to cook with these. These are just, they are wonderful. You can chop them up and put them in stir fries. Um, you can add them to a pesto. They're just, they're delicious. Um, so all hope is not lost. If your onions bolt, that's cool. There's scapes coming out of that um, and sautés. Oh my goodness. You've got to see what's going on with these peas. I am gobsmacked come look come look everybody is in bloom i feel like i saw a pod yep there it is there it is there's my pod look at that first so we're definitely gonna have snap peas soon but the real showstopper holy cow y'all it's got to be these king tut purple peas these king tut purple peas are just amazing look how tall look how tall and fancy and look at these blooms y'all can you see how gorgeous these are just showy 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 look how pretty sweet potato slips are and I got those in just a couple days ago. We'll see how those do. This is another brand new project for me. And speaking of brand new projects, I mean, outside of the peas and the carrots and the, those sweet potatoes <laughs> and the roostal plot. Anyway, look, 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 look. The potatoes popped. So many potatoes popped. Come look. I don't know if you can hear this, but there's some chicken politicking going on behind me and, uh, I hope they elect somebody good. Like, to, you may hear sounds. Uh, anyway, look at these potatoes. I am ever so proud of these potatoes. So very proud. And uh, I thought they would never come up. I have, I've never done potatoes before. I didn't know what I was looking at when I got a bag of seed potatoes in the mail. I don't know how a roost out plot no, I take that back. I know how a root stout plot works, but I've never been intimate with a root stout plot before in my life. Um, so experiment potato is um, it's coming to fruition. There will be potatoes, I'm hoping. Um, so I guess the idea is that as the potato plant gets taller, you hill around it with straw, and then there's supposed to be these beautiful pristine potatoes under a little layer of straw. <laughs> Um, come time to harvest. So I don't know. I mean, how cool would that be? I, I, I don't mind digging for my potatoes, but if I don't have to, that'd be awesome. So we're gonna see what comes of that. Travel along with me on my potato journey. Thanks for hanging out with me in the office and out in the garden today. We'll catch you up soon. Take care. cabbage moths decoy bait thing these <laughs>